I'm Mark. I'm a genetics nurse specialist. That's it? Well, that doesn't sound so complicated. It's not. <laughs> I've been working in clinical research for a significant amount of time. So uh, I moved from uh, a basic clinical research nurse um, working in various um, specialties. So I moved from cancer, then genetics, and then to common and rare diseases. Uh, and I've done that for several years, moved up a band to a band seven to lead the team. But nonetheless, I was in clinical research for roughly five, six years. Prior to that, I was in critical care um, as well as perioperative care here in UK. And then before that, I was in the Philippines doing nursing. <laughs> Man knows best. This particular job, well, or should I say many of the genomics nurse or genetics nurse specialist uh, role is a spin-off from uh, the project 100,000 Genomes Project uh, from the Genomics England. And therefore, the main purpose of this role is to embed genomic medicine into the, in day-to-day -day practice. Um, and therefore, I applied to it because uh, I thought, you know, something new, something different. And the good thing about it is because the role itself, although it's clinical, there is the research element to it. Um, and after all, since I, after I do, I've done my my master's in genetic medicine uh, here in UK. I thought that's the best, best way to put my education to good use. <laughs> Man knows best. Um, a genomics nurse specialist or a genetics nurse specialist is a nurse with advanced training in um, offering genomic medicine or gen uh, genomic medicine to patients with rare diseases. So when we say rare diseases, it could be cancer, it could be uh, polycystic kidney disease, it could be uh, inherited cardiac conditions, or the rare neurological conditions for that matter. So when we see patients, most of the time they are referred to us by uh, consult, uh, consultants for diagnosis, uh, for genomic, um, genomic diagnosis. So when we see these patients, we tell them about the type of genetic test that they would have, as well as we perform pre and post test genetic counseling. At the same time, we're also referring them to or signposting them. It's either we refer them or we signpost them to other uh, services that they could tap to or tap, tap onto. Um, so for instance, if they require uh, physiotherapy or occupational therapy, we could refer them to those uh, near to those uh, services near to where they live. Uh, to some specialties, uh, the role of genomics of a genomics specialist is embedded as an advanced practice, particularly in cancer. And there are some therapies, treatments that are um, should by should I say influenced by your genomic test. So, to give you an example, if let's say they have a genetic, um, let's say they have a genetic mutation in a specific gene that a particular drug could be targeted, uh, then they, the clinicians would be able to prescribe that drug. Um, so we're already moving into that stage where um, the one size fits all becoming is becoming obsolete. Uh, rather, we're becoming more precise. Um, so to a certain or greater extent, genomic medicine is um, part and parcel of precision medicine, which means that we are more we are targeting the natural biology of a particular disease in terms of how we manage it or how we treat it. It could be symptom management, it could be curative. It depends what kind of disease we're talking about. 
man knows best. So, as it's still, well, at least from my perspective, it's still your standard clinical nurse specialist. It just so happened that um, it depends on what the service is, uh, on, on how you are operating, and the type of population, patient population you've got. So let's say if you've got a patient population with a, let's say a treatment available for them, then a genomic nurse specialist to a certain or greater extent is involved in the diagnostic process and the treatment and care management of the patient. More often than not, your standard clinical nurse specialists are involved in the treatment management of the patient because the diagnosis is set forth by a medical clinician or a surgical clinician. For that matter. However, um, there are those who are only focused on the diagnostic process because there's no available treatment for the patients. Primarily, it's just supportive or symptom management. To some, they are involved in both, others involved in one aspect or the other. So it's still your standard CNS, but if you are to compare it to a ward nurse, um, definitely it's different <laughs> because you need to have advanced communication skills. You also need to um, possess not just basic, but um, advanced knowledge in genomics research and its application in clinical practice. Although what we're trying to do <clears throat> here in UK is we're trying to implement like a bite-sized program for uh, various levels of healthcare professionals from band four, five, six, up to seven, um, so that they could develop themselves uh, in genomics. So it's available out there. <laughs> Man knows best. It depends, really, um, because there are roles that are band 7, just like mine. There are those that are band 8. And there are those that are... The starting, most of the time, it, the starting post is band 6, that, and that's a trainee position. Um, primarily because you need... Uh, you need to have your clinical knowledge and skills already well founded before you even move into this specialty because you, know, um, you will be involved in the diagnostic and treatment and care management of the patient, making those decisions, what type of treatment or care management that you, you are going to give to your patients. And like in, like say, in a ward setting where you are heavily dependent on what your clinicians would say, this time no, you are involved, okay? Um, and therefore, um, most of the time, it's a band six, um, as far as I'm aware of. Um, but once you reach that stage where you are comfortable with your knowledge and skills, then <clears throat> more, more often than not, it's a band seven. And for the advanced roles, the reason why they are, they are let's say, on an eight or eight A or an eight B, as a, let's say, a nurse consultant for that matter, um, is because they are taking in more or taking on more responsibilities, not just leadership. Um, so they could also be involved in research. They're doing their actual research, not coordinating somebody else's research, but they're doing their own research for that matter. And they are also leading a team to a certain or greater extent. Some roles is a combination of clinical education and research. So, so um, uh, I know of some genetics nurses who are involved in the academia and they teach as part and parcel of their role. So it's really a multifaceted um, uh, specialty for those who are interested in, um, shall we say, clinic, clinical practice and research. There's a huge involvement in research and education here. Um, so it's not your standard uh, clinical nurse uh, or any standard nurse role that you might see out there. So you have to be prepared to, to read and to study a lot. Man knows best. In terms of training, there are trainings available. All you have to do is Google it. Um, just Google genomics education and then it will pop up. And there's the, those bite-sized uh, training that you can start uh, start with. So you can kickstart with, uh, let's say, uh, an e-learning module, just so you can get the flavor of how it is like. Because it does require scientific knowledge. <laughs> and the reason for that is, um, 
if you flip the situation or the flip the coin around, put yourself in the position of a, of a patient and somebody's t- telling you, okay, I'm, we are offering you a genetic test. So you would be asking the same questions, right? So what the hell on earth is a genetic test? And you have to explain about DNA, inheritance patterns, so on and so forth, and the actual test itself. Because the, your, the gen, a genetic test is not the same as, let's say, your uh, full blood count, where it answers high or low, yes or no. Genetic testing is not like that at all. Okay, it's more. There's more outcomes to it. Okay, so yeah, the uh, and and the impact of a genetic test to the entire family, and not just to the patient themselves, is huge. Especially if it is, uh, let's say, if you identified what we call an autosomal dominant uh, health um, disorder, not just a disease, but a disorder, okay? Meaning they have a constellation of signs and symptoms and they could easily pass it down to the next generation. That is a very, very tricky position to be in because you have to explain to the patient that A, you have a molecular, that you have confirmed the molecular basis of their disease and B, that they could pass it on. And Bearing in mind that, let's say, if your patient has got children and siblings, chances are they've got it as well. <laughs> okay? So it opens a lot of can of worms. So for a genomics nurse specialist, you need to be able to handle difficult conversations. Mama knows best, put you always to rest when staying in the United Kingdom. Mano's bed